to it, and I want to go out in fashion. You know, we didn't we didn't wore our different uh, team shirts and, and promoting that and stuff like that. So I said, this last one, I'm gonna dress up. I'm gonna go out in fashion. I'm gonna go out in style, and um, that's what I did. You know? You're gonna be a head of a champion. You gotta have flashing hot shirts, right? What's that? First of all, can you guys hear me? You got my. Y'all know what I'm saying. Uh, if I don't need it, then you know I won't use it. But if I need it, then I will. I'm just why I'm asking. Right. You know, if I'm talking loud enough, you can hear. It. And then I speak I the country sometimes too, so you can understand the grammar. I'll use it. Okay. Yeah, we'll have a country guy. Yeah, it'll be good. Okay, cool. Questions. Question for you. Um, you know, Tyson Fury is over here saying that you haven't knocked anybody out, and he was trying to claim that you didn't really knock Ariola out, even though I was there and he did. But I, I did that with a broken hand and a tore and a tore myself <laughs> with a third degree burn on my elbow. Wait, burn, yeah. Wait, man. <laughs> but you know, uh, Tyson Fury just need to stop. He need to he need to stop quoting things in his comment session. You know, um, he's bringing that into this and. Certain things that people have to say to prep their mind up. When you're facing the baddest man on the planet, you must, he, he's gonna have to take his mindset to a place where he never took it before because I have the power to do what a lot of fighters wanna do in the heavyweight division and that is to knock the guy out, you know? No matter if it's the first round or the 12th round, you're not safe with Deontay Wilder, that's facts. And I think I've proved that 39 times. You've always had the big personality and the, you know, the power to match it. And I know you've been frustrated waiting for this kind of moment for a long time. How does it feel that it's finally here and you're getting your dessert? I mean, you see, you, you, I mean, it's, it's amazing, man. It, it feels wonderful because it's like, it's like we've been trying for so long. And I, we, we, we knew what we was up against because, you know, the heavyweight division was dead in America and, you know, people lost interest of it. And, I knew it was going to be a battle to try to get it back to to where it is, you know. And I just thank God that I'm I'm coming up in the in the, in, the, in the era that I am, and I got so many other great heavyweights that are allowing it, you know, that we're all working together and making it so so exciting again for the fans, you know. And to be able to to do this tour with Tyson Fury, both of us have very high energy um, characters about us. So we're the, probably the, the the two most charismatic guys in the heavyweight division. So when you put two personalities like us together, you don't know what you're gonna get. Yo, I'm on I'm on predictable myself, but when you get somebody like that that can talk as well as I, and we can both, you know, go at each other, because it's all real. I don't want nobody to mistake that this fake or they trying to sell promotion now. And if we trying to do that, then we're doing a damn good job then, I think. But uh this is all real. That's the point about it. That's why it's gonna be a great fight because it's real. I can't wait. I still feel the excitement inside of me. I still feel the passion. And I can't wait to mentally break my mind down even more to when I think about him, I really, really want to hurt him. Hey Deontay, how are you doing? Doing good, how about yourself? Good. Um, I asked Tyson this earlier also and I uh, just wanted to get your thoughts on it. One thing I find interesting about you and Tyson is in your earliest days as pros, you had a lot of people that never thought you would not only become champion, but even make it to being a, a legitimate contender in the division. Uh, you both had a lot of doubters. Um, nobody thought he would be Klitschko. A lot of people were expecting Luis Ortiz to beat you. Is, is there like any sort of kinship between you, a mutual respect that you guys are two guys that have proven all these doubters wrong and, and got to this point to this really big heavyweight title fight? Oh, most definitely, most definitely. Um, it's, in, in a sense, all fighters respect each other because we're the same occupation. At the end of the day, we're all a family, you know, and um, you see a lot of fighters hang out with each other, and you see some fighters don't hang out with each other, and, you know, it's just the personalities like that. Some fighters don't want to be around other fighters because it's egos. It's always going to be egos when you get around other fighters and stuff like that, you know, but, you know, you do have some that you can build a relationship with, almost like a brotherhood with, you know, and um, then you got something that you can be, you know, you can be cordial with, and um, you can, you can have, you can, you can uh, have them as an associate, as, as say. With me and Tyson, man, you know, right now we're trying to see what the relationship lies. I don't, you know, I say, yeah, you know, like, but you know, he's a fun-loving guy, you know. The things that he do for a family and, and how he stay true to his roots, 
is everything to me. Because I always say I know who I am and I know what I stand for and I stay true, stay true to my people as well too. And that's very important to never forget where you're coming from and always and always you know keep that with you. Even when, when even when you're around people or even when you go to another country, you can you be yourself, you represent your people, and you come and get a, and you come and get them the best that you can give them. And uh, it's just a it's just a pleasure to be able to have a guy like him to be able to promote my first pay per view. Um, to do it, you know, without him, I don't know no other guy that he could be more interested, I mean, more excited for me to be with. You know, out of all my fights, I had to promote it myself. I was, you know, competing against other sports as well, too. But this time, I feel like I could really just be like this right here, just let him talk, you know what I mean? Sometimes he say funny things because of his, his British accent, what makes it sound funny. You know, your daughter, sit down, you know, you know. <laughs> When I move, you move just like that. You know, you know, that stuff sounds funny because it's a British accent, you know, and um, I'm just happy I can just sit back, relax, and let him do his thing. I do my thing, and then you just know, we both crazy, you know, probably got, probably bipolar too, you know, because one minute we can be loving each other, oh, we like each other, the next minute, you see what happens. You know, people get, you know, the people that's around, they always get, they get uneasy, they get nervous. People don't have to worry. It's crazy how people worry about the fighters, but we gotta worry about you guys. You know, we see people panicking and, and everywhere, and I done made Shelly fall, I didn't even know I did that, you know what I mean? I'm just all over, you know, I'm just, I'm having fun. I'm in my element, and I'm not gonna do nothing to, to, uh, to, to harm this fight, man. I want this fight, and um, I got it, and I can't wait to perform for you guys on December 1st. And the ones that's watching, click that button. This is going to be the best money you ever spend. And you ain't got to worry about the bill because that's going to come January the 15th. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Adrian, I'll take it right here. I'm Mike Bach, the Dennis Media Champion Network. Uh, my first question, Tyson's signature win has come against Vladimir Klitschko. You have plenty of experience with Klitschko. You have a relationship with Klitschko. You've sparred with him a lot. Have you talked to Klitschko leading up to this fight yet? I haven't. I haven't, you know. Um, Maybe we'll do that, you know. Maybe you gave me, yeah, we haven't thought about that. And, you know, like I said, we're very close with him. We, we're connected with him. And uh, that'll be easy. That might be something that we may, you may, you may even have sparked up an idea, to be honest. I appreciate that, you know what I mean? Um, this is his last fight. Um, I want to know what he was thinking in the moments of the time. You know, before, we, 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 was, we felt like he was losing in some rounds, and, and to the end, I think he got the decision um, that he lost. You know, I, I really want to know, we're going to get that information. That's, that's pretty good, man. I appreciate that. My last question, uh, I want to talk about your last fight against Louis Ortiz, one of your best wins, I believe. Um, how much, how many, how much uh, confidence has grown within you after that? Oh, fight? man, tremendous. Uh, you know, people always say I'm cocky, I'm arrogant now, but I bet the deal for it. I mean, I'm... People gotta understand, People, different people come from different cultures around the world, and you just never know what the next man sitting next to you have gone through to get to the point where it is now. Just because you see a person all uh, down, just like me, just because you see me, you think I got the finest things in life, but it, uh, even though it's all materialistic, you, know, you, you just never know, I could be faking it, you know? Yeah, it could be borrowed stuff, you know? It's, it's, people don't understand where people come from, and with that being said, you know, it, it caused problems and, and different things like that. I don't forgot the damn question. I ain't about it. <laughs> Confidence after the Ortiz. Oh, yeah. You man, I, I, man, because I get so, my mind goes so deep in certain things, of certain situations that occurs now, because I know people that is going through so much, and people may not even know they're going through things, and they're going through hell, you know. Just because of who they is, they may think certain things and it's not like that. But Ortiz definitely gave me the confidence that I needed uh, on top of the confidence that I already had. You know, um, it just put that stamp on that, that I am the best in the world. I'm fulfilling the prophecy where Emmanuel Stewart said before that I am the best. And even when I fight the so-called best, I'm still going to knock them out. I'm still going to knock them out. So um, it's just amazing just to be here. It's amazing to be able to fulfill a prophecy. And um, I still got a long way to go, though. I still got a long way to go. I don't feel like, I don't feel like, 
this is the end of the road for me. You know, I sound like I've already lost or something. This is the end of the road for me. You know, as far as my career is concerned, it's just the beginning in this building. And um, I think it's going to be a bright future. You guys got a, a, a wonderful heavyweight champion of the world in me, the Deontay Wilder, a person that can be a, a, a man's man, that can be a, be a, 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 a people's champion, love people. But when it's time to perform, I, get, I feed your egos with that, with the knockouts as well, too. So I'm perfect for the sport. Thank you. Thank you. I have two questions. My first one is, what exactly caused the dust up today on stage with Tyson? Just, you know, just, we're excited, you know, too excited. He nervous, he can't even sit down. He had to sit down since he got off the plane, and I know he ain't that jet lag. <laughs> it's all nervous. When, when, you, when you've been around just fighting, period, when you've been around the environment where it consists of any type of danger, <laughs> that consists of people being fearful, you, can, you, start, you start to smell it, you start to see it. And when you see it, you can identify it by its name. I'm a type of person that I can feel about oral energy and sometimes emotion. I'm a very special person. You know, my grandma said I was anointed. And I forever said it, put it in people's head that I was anointed by God. My 30s has been some of the best years of my life because I've, have, I've, I've been revealed to so many things in my life. My mind is more open than it's ever been in my life. The way I look at the world is so different than what people look at it. And that allows me to be who I am. You know, it allows me to treat people with dignity and pride and respect, no matter who they are in the world. If you take this title away from me as the Airway Champ of the World, I'm Deontay Wilder. And that's how I want people to treat me, because no matter who you are, no matter where you come from, no matter what title is under your name, I'm going to treat you with the respect like you deserve, as I would want you to treat me, you know. So, with this being said, boxing, it brings the best out of you when you're competing. When you see another man that's trying to do the same thing you're trying to do to him, when you're trying to feed your family, he's trying to feed his, you're gonna get those emotions. Stuff like this is gonna happen, but I just want people to, you know, when it happens like that, I, you know, like I said, I always talk about others can make it worse than what the situation really is. I, I see why how people get so hesitant they can, be on the edge of their seat. Every time I fight, people on the edge of their seat because they don't know. You can't even go to the bathroom. You can't even fish your food. If you don't have your food before I fight, don't go. Please. <laughs> Please. I don't want no one being upset, you know, that they spent their money and they didn't see the knockout and they're going to have to go home and watch the replays. You know, before you, before you sit down, whether you're at home or in the venue, get everything you need to do before I fight because with me, you just never know what's gonna happen. And I don't know when it's coming, but it's coming. And when it comes, y'all put another quote, bam, baby, good night. <laughs> Inside and outside of the ring, you obviously have all the tools and characteristics that any superstar athlete would want. In your opinion, what do you think's held you back from becoming that super big crossover superstar? The sport itself, you know? Just being in the heavyweight division, not having American heavyweights to to really, you know, for, for fans to follow behind, you know. Uh, after the Klitschko era, well, before the, even with the Klitschko era, although they wasn't <coughs> Americans, you know, they fought in Germany all the time and stuff like that. So uh, the longer they was in, in, in service, you know, the more and more it started to decline in America, you know. Then that's when Floyd came along and he started doing his thing. So the heavyweight division started to die, you know, and now it's a lot of again. You know, and here I am. I'd have had to work so hard, man. It's just been crazy. But I already knew what I was getting myself into. I knew it was going to be tough for me. You know, I knew that I'm in a country where it's multiple sports. I'm in a world where it's diverse people here. You know, even even if they're from another country, they still support their people. You know what I mean? That makes it hard as well too. Like, but it also benefits as well because when these people come over to this country. Those same ones that's here that's gonna support him, so it's still making money. But the point, you know, although it's so, it's like 101 reasons why it took so long, I just thank God that I'm here. I won't complain. I'm not complaining. 
I'm not gonna say, Lord, why I got, why it took this long to give? Nah, I'm gonna say, Lord, I'm here now, baby, and I thank you so much. Now you can put me in this position. I'm gonna do it to the fullest of my potential. I'm gonna do it to the best of my ability. And all those that all those that support me and support to support this car, I'm gonna make sure they get that money's worth. Hi, Deontay, Deandre, Boxing Insider. I spoke to George Foreman recently, and I asked him how you matched up against other heavyweights, and he likened your fights with you being a deer and you fighting bears, and in those fights he favored the deer because of your agility and your way to move and your strength. What is your reaction to his opinion? Uh, it makes me smile, you know. I had to hold myself when he just playing it, you know. <laughs> uh, but it makes me smile, you know. George, George is one of those old school fighters that people talk about to, to this day. He's one of those guys that when people say the golden days, he come out of, he done a great thing, you know, my remarkable moment for George is when he overcome, we overcome adversity at 45 and came back and win the title. You know, many people were doubted that. You know, I didn't personally see it myself, but I, as being in the sport and, and, and hear what goes on now and how people think fighters, just like Luis on TV, oh, he's 50 years old, he's just in this with a man 30 to 80 years old. Just imagine what they were saying when Joe's was coming along. He's 45, he's never did. You can't doubt no one out. Age ain't nothing but a number. It's all about how you feel inside at the end of the day. Age is beautiful. Age is beautiful. It means growth for some. It means knowledge. And it can become why it can become wisdom if you apply the knowledge to your life. You know? So with that being said, you know, it's a it's, it, it, it makes me feel good to um for him to say that about me. Because that just lets you know that there's hope that the deer can kill the bear. <laughs> hey guys, one last question. And also in the trash talk, uh, Tyson Fury tried to make mention of your chin and weakness of your chin. And those were questions people had before you had the fight with Severn and other Ortiz and other formidable opponents who outsized you and you matched up to them. Well, are you, do you think that is still a question among boxing fans or? Just part of Fury's banter. Man, that's just part of Fury's banter. You know, um, he's a very nervous individual at this moment in time, and he should be. I understand him. You know, if, if I was in this position and I had to face someone like me, I would be nervous too. I wouldn't be able to sit down either. You know, he probably can. He probably it's hard. It's probably hard for him to use the bathroom at time. You know, but but when it's time to fight, especially the week of the fight. He's gonna get a nervous wreck. We're gonna see how he is when it's time for the week of the fight to go to the press conference. It's gonna be a nervous wreck because then it is real. See, right now, he can say what he wants. I mean, we got two months and, and you know, you know, although it's still, it feels like a real, it feels like this is a real fight week, you know? You know, so it brings the emotions out. But when it really actually time to come, it's gonna be a different thing for him. And, uh, but I'm just glad that he's here. I'm glad that I got him as an opponent, as a sparring partner, man. Uh, I respect the guy that, at the high most, you know. And um, yeah, like you said, he loved me and I love him too, man. And this is what it's all about. But I got to whoop him because I love him. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, everyone.